What's up, Crim Heist? Welcome to another Criminology Educational Video. And for today, we will be discussing the subject of law enforcement organization and administration. So before we jump into our discussion, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the professor, and hit the notification bell for you to be updated for my next video upload. So by the way, let me introduce myself. I am Sean Francis Sandiego, also known as the professor. So, what are we going to discuss for today? So, first is the development of National Bureau of Investigation and its function. Second is the understanding salient provisions of Republic Act 10867, of course, still in connection to the NBI. And describing the organization and functions of the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, o yung tinatawag natin na PIDEA. And identifying the functions of Department of National Defense or DND and the Department of Transportation and its attached agencies. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, lumayo na muna tayo kay PNP, BFP, and BJMP. So, uh, discuss muna natin yung mga other law enforcement agencies here in the Philippines, which is NBI, PIDEA, DND, and DOTR. So first on our list would be the history of the National Bureau of Investigation. So for NBI, the NBI saw its inception on November 13, 1936 upon the approval of Commonwealth Act No. 181 by the legislature. So ibig sabihin, the law that created NBI is Commonwealth Act No. 181. It was the brainchild of the late President Manuel L. Quezon and Jose Ayulo, then Secretary of Justice. So, ibig sabihin, yung mga pasimunuraw sa, uh, sa pagbuo ng NBI was the late President Manuel L. Quezon and the Secretary of Justice back then, which is jo Jose Yulo. So, this is the logo or the official logo of the NBI. So, the NBI was tasked with organizing the Division of Inted, uh, Investigation or yung tinatawag natin na DI, which was patterned doon sa U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation o yung tinatawag natin na FBI. Where Thomas Dugan, a veteran American police captain from the New York Police Department, and Flaviano C. Guerrero, the only Filipino member of the U.S. FBI. During the Japanese occupation, the DI was affiliated with the Bureau of Internal Revenue or BIR and the Philippine Constabulary known as the Bureau of Investigation or BI. Subsequently, during the post-liberation period, all available DI agents were recruited by the U.S. Army CIC as investigators. Since then, yung Bureau has an increase uh, increasingly significant role. Thus, on June 19, 1947, by virtue of Republic Act No. 157, na reorganize na si Bureau of Investiga uh, Investigation. Later, it was amended by Executive Order No. 94, which was issued on November 4, 1947, na nirename niya yung BI or Bureau of Investigation to what is presently known as the National Bureau of Investigation or NBI. It was further amended by uh, its latest law, which is RA10867, an act reorganizing and modernizing the NBI. So, its primary function is to what? To investigate crimes and other offenses against the law of the Philippines, both at its own initiative or when the public interest may, may require. So, according to Republic Act 10867, uh, particularly Section 4, Nandiyan na ito, na ito ang mga powers and functions ng NBI. So first is, undertake investigation and detection of crimes and offenses enumerated under Section 5 hereof. Issued subpoena for the appearance of any person for investigation or production of documents, which is yung subpoena and then yung production of documents, subpoena duches tecum, through its officers from the ranks of regional director to director. Act as a national clearing house of criminal records and other related information for the benefit of the government. Render technical assistance to government agencies and instrumentalities when so requested. Extend assistance in cases involving extradition and mutual legal assistance when it is requested by the Department of Justice. Establish an NBI Academy which shall be responsible for the recruitment, training, and development of all NBI agents and personnel among others. 
establish and maintain a forensic and scientific research center which shall serve as the primary center for forensic and scientific research in furtherance of scientific knowledge in criminal investigation, detection, evidence collection, and preservation, and provide the necessary training, therefore. Establish and maintain a cybercrime investigation and assessment center, which shall serve as the nerve center for the computer information technologies, data on cybercrime cases, computer intrusions, threats, and other related crimes or activities. Establish and maintain an integrated, comprehensive, and state-of-the-art network of equipment and facilities to be used by the NBI in its criminal investigation, detection, and evidence gathering, and to provide the corresponding training in this record. Request the assistance of the Philippine National Police, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, or any other agencies of the government, including the government-owned and or controlled corporations, in its anti-crime drive. Such assistance may include the use of agency's personnel and facilities upon prior approval by the head of the agency concerned. Conduct intelligence operations in furtherance of the foregoing powers and functions. Enter into any contract or transaction for the acquisition, ownership, possession, administration, lease, disposition, or acceptance of real or personal property in its name, subject to the approval of the Secretary of Justice. Establish a modern NBI clearance and identification center containing all derogatory and criminal records and civilian identification records, including their identifying marks and characteristics and fingerprint database, as well as dental records pursuant to Presidential Decree 1575 requiring practitioners of dentistry to keep records of their patients. Maintain for the purpose of investigative and forensic requirements of the NBI, Relevant database such as ballistic records of firearms, including but not limited to data ownership, possession, and other related identifying circumstances, and the deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA data bank. Perform such other functions as the President or the Secretary of Justice may assign. Now let's go to the understanding salient provisions of Republic Act 10867 or the law that modernizes and reorganizes the NBI. So first is the jurisdiction of the NBI. So ano ba yung jurisdiction or sahop lang ni NBI? So as to section 5, letter A, human trafficking cases in all airports in the Philippines. Extrajudicial or extra-legal killings committed by the state's security forces against media practitioners and activists. Killing of justices and judge. Violation of Republic Act No. 10175 or also known as the Cybercrime Prevention Act. Cases referred to as the Interagency Anti-Graph Coordinating Council. Violations of the anti dummy Law. Cases involving threats to security or assaults against the persons of the President, Vice President, Senate President, Speaker of the House of Representatives, and Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Transnational crimes pursuant to existing international agreements. Identification of the dead victims in cases of mass fatality incidents. And violations of commercial, economic, financial, or white-collar crimes as pursuant to Republic Act 8792, RA 8484, RA 8293, RA 8799, and PD 1689. That's why one of the requirements for you to become an NBI agent is to be a CPA or lawyer. Kasi it is not just for criminal cases but also for commercial crimes. So, the NBI director and other officials as pursuant to Section 6 of Republic Act 10867. So, the NBI shall be headed by a director and assisted by two deputy directors, one for administration and another for operations, and as an assistant director for, are for each of the following seven services, investigation service, intelligence service, human, service, a human resource and management service, Controller Service, Forensic and Scientific Research Service, Legal Service, and Information and Communications Technology Service. The NBI Director shall be appointed by the President and shall have the rank of and benefits equivalent to the Undersecretary. 
no person shall be appointed director unless he or she is a natural born citizen of the Philippines, a member of the Philippine Bar, so dapat lawyer siya, who has engaged in the practice of law for at least 15 years, preferably from within the ranks of director. The assistant regional director to deputy directors shall likewise be appointed by the president of the Philippines coming from the ranks of the NBI upon the recommendation of the Secretary of Justice. The assistant regional director naman to deputy directors shall likewise be appointed by the President of the Philippines coming from the ranks of the NBI and of course upon the recommendation of the Secretary of Justice. So what are the qualifications of an NBI agent? So first, you must be a citizen of the Philippines of good moral character, a member of a Philippine bar, or a holder of baccalaureate degree who passed the necessary government licensure examination relevant to investigative functions of the NBI, and successfully passed the competitive mental and physical examinations required by the NBI. Now, after the NBI, let's go now to PIDEA, or the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agencies. So, ang creation ng PIDEA, serves as the implementing arm of the board, shall be responsible for the efficient and effective law enforcement of all provisions on any dangerous drug and or controlled precursor and essential chemicals as provided by Republic Act 9165. Kasi ang uh, PIDEA will serve as the implementing arm of the dangerous drugs board. So the PIDEA is headed by a director general within the rank of undersecretary who shall be responsible for the general administration and management of the agency. Uh, the Director General is appointed by the President, and he or she must possess the adequate knowledge, training, and experience in the field of dangerous drugs and in any following uh, fields, such as law enforcement, law, medicine, criminology, psychology, or social work. The Director General of PIDEA shall be assisted by two Deputy Directors, uh, with the rank of assistant secretary, one for operations and one for administration. Yung dalawang deputy director general shall be likewise appointed by the president upon the recommendation of the Dangerous Drugs Board. The two deputy director general shall possess the qualifications as those director general of the PIDEA. Ang PIDEA po is under directly of the office of the president. What are the functions of the PIDEA? So first is to implement or cause the efficient and effective implementation of the national drug control strategies formulated ng Dangerous Drugs Board. So anything related to drugs or dangerous drugs will be for PIDEA. Next is undertake the enforcement of the provisions of Article 2 of Republic Act 9165 relative to the unlawful acts and penalties involving any dangerous drug and or controlled precursors and essential chemicals. Administer oath and issue subpoena and subpoena duches tecum. When we say subpoena duches tecum, ito yung um, dadalin sa korte is documents relative to the conduct of investigation involving the violations of Republic Act 9165. Arrest and apprehend as well as search all violators and seize or confiscate the effects or proceeds of the crime provided by the law. Take charge and have custody of all dangerous drugs. Take charge and have custody of all dangerous drugs and or controlled precursors and essential chemicals seized, confiscated, or surrendered to any national, provincial, or local law enforcement agencies and or controlled precursors and essential chemicals seized, confiscated, or surrendered to any national, provincial, or local law enforcement agency. So again, this is just an overview regarding PIDEA. So, next is establish a forensic laboratory in each Philippine National Police Office in every province and city in order to facilitate action on seized or confiscated drugs, thereby hastening their destruction without delay. Recommend to the DOJ for the forfeitures of properties and or assets of persons and or corporations found to be violating the provisions of Republic Act 9165, and in accordance with the pertinent provisions of the Anti-Money Laundering Act of 2001. Prepare for prosecution or cause the filing of appropriate criminal civil cases for violation of all laws on dangerous drugs, controlled precursors, 
and essential chemicals and other similar controlled substances. Monitor and if warranted by circumstances, in coordination with the Philippine Postal Office and the Bureau of Customs, inspect all air cargo packages, parcels, and mails in the Central Post Office para malaman if there is a dangerous drugs, controlled precursors, or essential chemicals. Next is conduct eradication programs to destroy wild or illegally ground, gro grown plants from which dangerous drugs may be extracted. Establish and maintain a national drug intelligence system in, co uh, in cooperation with law enforcement agencies, other government agencies, and local government units that will assist in the apprehension of big-time drug lords. Now, Let's go with the Department of National Defense and the Department of Transportation. So, this will just be an easy discussion or just an overview. Again, katulad lang din nung ginawa natin kay NBI and kay PDEA. Ano ang mandate kay Department of National Defense? The DND has always been relied upon to guard the country against external and external threats to national peace and security promote the welfare, and provide support for social and economic development. So what is the legal basis? So the creation of DND was from the Commonwealth Act No. 1, which was uh, enacted during December 21, 1935. So the National Defense Act created the Council of National Defense to advise the President on all matters pertaining to the National Defense Policy. Si Commonwealth Act No. 430, which was enacted during May 31, 1939, as implemented by Executive Order No. 230, on October 31, 1939, it created the Department of National Defense. So, while on Executive Order No. 94, it charged the DND with a duty of supervising the National Defense Program ng bansa. So, ibig sabihin, anything regarding the defense of the country is sa DND yan. As to Executive Order 292, the Administrative Code of 1987, dinirektahan ng DND to exercise executive supervision over the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Office of the Civil Defense, the Philippine Veterans Affairs Office, the National Defense College of the Philippines, and the Government Arsenal. So these are the following agencies na attach kay DND. Of course, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, which includes the Philippine Air Force, the Philippine Army, and the Philippine Navy, Government Arsenal, National Defense College of the Philippines, Office of the Civil Defense, Philippine, uh, Philippine Veterans Affairs Office. So, the agency's mandate and function naman for the Department of Transportation. So, si DOTR is the primary policy planning, programming, coordinating, implementing, and administrative entity of the executive branch of the government on the promotion, development, and regulation of a dependable and coordinated network of transportation systems as well as in the fast, safe, efficient, and reliable transportation service. So anything with regards to transportation would be under the Department of Transportation. The LTO, LTFRB are all under the Department of Transportation. So, Republic Act 10844, particularly Section 15, created the Department of Information and Communications Technology, defining its powers and functions. So, lahat ng operating units, Department of Transportation and Communications, with the function and responsibilities dealing with communications are abolished, and their powers and function, applicable funds and appropriation records, equipments, property, and personnel were transferred dito kay Department of Information and Communication Technology and remaining uh, renaming to DOTC, to Department of Transportation. So, dati kasi, ang tawag sa department is Department of Transportation and Communications. But since it was abolished, ginawa siyang Department of Information and Communications Technology. And then later on, nirename siya as Department of Transportation. As to Executive Order Number 125A, amending Executive Order Number 125, they reorganize yung Ministry of Transportation and Communications, defining its power and function for the other purposes. As to Executive Order 125, they reorganize naman yung Ministry of Transportation and Communication, defining its powers and function for other purpose. EO 546 can create yung Ministry of Public Works and Ministry of Transportation and Communication. 
Next is the function of the DTO, DOTR. First is policy form formulation. So any policies, rules, and regulations with regards to transportation would be under the DOTR or Department of Transportation. Next is industry services regulations. So next is infrastructure development, internal cooperation, And what are the sectoral offices ng Department of Transportation? So, una is road transport. For road transport, nandyan si LTO and si LTFRB. So, pag sinabi kasi natin road transport, any transportation or conveyance that was situated or takes place in a road. So, pag si LTO, so para mas mabilis lang nating maintindihan, si LTO, usually, eto yung for private vehicles. Registration, issuance, regulations of any private vehicles are for LTO. Ang LTFRB naman, nag issue yan ng franchise or license to operate kay public utility vehicle and, of course, provide for the rules and regulations and policies with regards to fares and any other rules regarding public utility vehicles. For maritime transport naman, ito si Philippine Coast Guard. It is an armed and uniform service primarily tasked with enforcing all applicable laws within the Philippine waters, conducting maritime security operations, Safeguarding of life and property at sea and protecting the marine and environment and the resources. Next is the Office of the Transportation Security or tinatawag natin na OTS. So the Office of the Transportation Security is the single authority responsible for the security transportation systems of the country including but not limited to the following. Civil Aviation, Sea Transport, and Maritime Infrastructure, Land Transportation, Rail System and Infrastructure. It was created by virtue of EO 277 in response to the international mandate calling for single authority for all modes of transportation. So, lahat ng types of information, may it be land, sea, or air transportation, would be under the supervision of the Department of Transportation. Now, let's go to the attached agencies for the DOTR. So, dito kay Civil Aviation, yung tinatawag natin na Air Transportation, na dyan si Civil Aviation Security or CAAP, Manila International Airport Authority or MIA, Civil Aeronautics Board, Mactan Cebu International Airport Authority, Philippine Aerospace Development Corporation. As for road transport, na dyan si Toll Regulatory Board, Office of the Transport Cooperatives, the PNR or the Philippine National Railways, LRTA or Light Rail Transit Authority, and North Luzon Railways Corporation. As for maritime transport or tinatawag natin na water transportation, na dyan si Philippine Ports Authority, Maritime Industry Authority, Cebu Ports Authority, and the Philippine Merchant Maritime Academy or yung PMMA. So, thank you very much and I do hope that you learned a lot regarding DOTR or Department of Transportation, uh, the Department of National Defense, the PDEA, and the NBI. So, if you love this video, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the professor and hit the notification bell for you to be updated for my next video upload. Thank you very much and have a great day.